If you guys are into fountain pens, I'm pretty sure you heard of the name Waterman and their fountain pens. Here's a shot of all my Waterman fountain pens that I've collected over the years. Um, I've gone through, I think I bought every single version that Waterman has from, I think this is their least expensive one. This is the Waterman Hemisphere. And it retails for about $60. All the way up to the Edson, which they discontinued. I even had a Waterman Elegance that I sold. Um, and everything in between. I even have some older vintage models, but I don't use those that often. These over here, I... I rotate, rotate them in my uh, writing sometimes and I actually enjoy using Waterman. They're my top fountain pens right now. So here's my guide on purchasing a Waterman fountain pen and what to look for. Uh, I'll just go over quickly all the versions that I have and I'll give you the pros and cons of all of them and then compare it. Right here you got the Hemisphere. Quick and short review of it is that it's a solid pen, pretty light. The only downside is the nib is a little bit short and is very thin. I mean if you got large hands you're not going to be able to grip it as well, I think. It's a nice pen, very... feels more like a traditional pen, ballpoint pen. The nib is actually very smooth and is made out of steel. Next, this is one of my favorite actually, the Waterman Expert. And I usually, usually use it daily and is my top fountain pen right now that I've been using. This is the Waterman Expert. Uh, this is the third version. I have the number one and two. The difference is negligible, but I think the this version is the best right now. The Waterman Expert 3. The 1 and 2 has some minor decoration and was a little bit lighter. This one feels more sturdy, but it's made out of a steel nib. Don't let that fool you because this is very smooth while having a very nice um, writing characteristic. I think is the perfect uh, fountain pen and the only one that could beat it I think is this one right here which is about 10 times more expensive. This is the Aurora 88 which I did many reviews on already. This is my go-to fountain pen. Uh, anyway, it just has the, all the characteristics of a very good fountain pen. It has a pull, pull out cap. Only a twist. The nib is very distinctive and very smooth writer. Very light as well. Everyday carry. Very good. Charleston. Also a top fountain pen from Waterman. This I have to rank it number two next to the Expert. Uh, it costs a little bit more because it has a... 14k nib, 14k gold nib is very smooth but very similar to the Expert. I think it feels a little bit better. The only reason I'm writing it a little bit lower than the Expert is because of the screw cap. Yeah, you have to unscrew it every single time you want to take it out and write. And this little and this um, design right here, I think it could be improved a little bit. The treads get in your way of gripping it. Think how they have it in the experts. Perfect, I mean, I don't feel anything. No treads. Moving on, we got the perspective. I personally don't like this pen. It reminds me a lot of the elegance, but it's cheaper. I think it's a 128 right now. It's a steel nib, but it feels almost like the elegance 
fountain pen which costs about five hundred dollars or higher right now this has a steel nib and steel grip right here for you for your fingers I rate this mm, not very high because not because of the nib nib is okay but because it's rather heavy for size and the this grip section is just gets it's difficult to write with some people like 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 it like this and the metal section I for one I'm not a fan of metal as the gripping just because it feels a little bit cold and yeah that's the main reason and slippery but this is a nice pen very traditional design and it the grip is actually a little bit thicker than the this one right here the hemisphere compared to thickness yeah this one is very thin so moving on we got the Kareem I actually have two of them one is the rhodium plated silver and gold this is a very nice writer I mean this is the top maybe four I'll rank it number four reasons because it's actually too smooth the nib especially this one the rhodium one this is like writing on glass if you want a really really smooth nib on a fountain pen I would recommend this one right here rhodium plated green waterman this is the smoothest nib you probably get I think it's about $250 right now this one's a little bit less smooth but it's very smooth still uh, design this is a hoodie nib it's a uh, there's absolutely no flex and writes almost like a ball roll ball and yeah pretty decent design I like the grips over here and there's no dreads in your way and it's a snap cap which is good moving on we have the night and day this pen uh, I have to write it number six I think just because it's a very nice design unique the nib is very smooth if not this is right under this one the cream is very smooth I mean and you could get some nice variation in your writing with it if you push down hard enough the reason I'm writing it so low is because of the weight it's a little bit heavy it's not for everyone this grip section notice is not completely circular it's more of a square tapered on four sides so yeah, it just gets a little bit uh, tiring messes up my writing also the I think the proportions on this nib is actually too large if you see it. it should be a little bit thinner I mean a little bit shorter so you can write better there's a nice pen snap cap pretty heavy nice design they have a smaller version of this but I didn't get that I think it's the same thing then we got the Edsons which I like and these things they rival the smoothness of the Korean especially this one the platinum diamond one this guy is probably the smoothest nib I have on my fountain pens some people like very smooth nibs I used to like it but after writing with them for a while it just gets boring I mean there's no variation is it just like writing on glass basically on any notebook like I like using different notebooks and you can actually feel the texture of the notes that you're taking depending on the notebook so 
This is the Edson right here. If you want to get Edson that's very smooth, I'll get this one, the diamond one. I have in three colors. I, I don't have the green one, the emerald, but I have the ruby. These guys, they have a gold nib. They're smooth, but not as smooth as the rhodium one, which is very good, I think. Still smoother than all these guys right here, except the, this guy, the Korean, and maybe this one. Very smooth nib. The design on this is very good as well. I mean, many believe or have this as their grail pen. I had this for about 10 years and I got a lot of use out of it. Um, I think the nibs, the shortcoming of the nib is that if you don't write with these Waterman pens, all of these on the line table right now, for over maybe one or two weeks, it just dries up which I don't like. That's why I like my Aurora 88 the most because it just doesn't dry up. You can leave it in here, not write for it for a month and it'll still write. With these Waterman, you gotta clean it, take care of it if you don't uh, use it over in over one or two weeks. Um, i just give you guys a, I mean, all these pens from Waterman, they're quality pens and I think if you're a novice and starting with uh, fountain pens, I think one you should get is either the Charleston or the Expert. These two. I mean, if you want to feel what Waterman is all about, I mean, these two pens will give you exactly what you need to know about it. Uh, just do a quick uh, sample with this guy right here. This is the an expert three actually, and the ink is Waterman Serenity Blue. Um, not gonna get much line variation with these guys, but. Very smooth writers. Notice that it is a uh, you can hear the paper. I'm using a moleskin notebook. I do have other notebooks like Rodia and even Hermes and Mont Blanc, and those paper cost like I think a hundred dollars a refill. But I always go back to the moleskin. People don't like it, but for me, this and a Waterman pen feels really, really good. You're not gonna. I think the it's the texture. Yeah, even though the I think it's all made in China now, but yeah, these note notebooks do just have some nice feel to it with a fountain pen. Uh, here's a sample of the Charleston. I think I have a blue black in quotes. This. Very similar to the expert in the nib. There's a fine point. Also in a That's the writing sample for a Waterman Charleston. I think these two are, if you're beginning to collect fountain pens or want to try the Waterman line, I think these two will represent it the best. 
these two pens right here. Uh, up next, I'll do some of my other fountain pens. I think I have a large collection of Auroras, which I showed two of you guys with already. And maybe I could do also an ink uh, review or guide, but these are my favorite inks right now. Waterman Serenity Blue and they're black. Okay, thanks for watching guys.